Hello, welcome back to the Kitchen Table Modelers Workshop. My name's Ian. This is my kitchen table where I do all my modelling. So, another review for you. Um, what have we got for you? If you look over my shoulder here, we can see we've got a model from Tacom. And it is the M31 Armoured Recovery Vehicle. Now, um, a few reviews ago, I did a review on the Tamiya Dragon Wagon uh, Tank Transporter in 135th scale, and I discussed about all the different things you could have on the back of it and to this day I've never seen anyone do a tank transport with an armoured recovery vehicle on the back so when I saw this one come up on eBay a while ago I thought why not see if I can get it and I was lucky enough to get it for a really cheap price and I'm happy to do that. So um, I don't know much about the kit, I've not really looked inside the box, um, let's get it on the table, I don't need to waffle on about it too much and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so we are on the table. Uh, first off, box art. Wow. Um, action shot coming ashore from a, a landing craft tank LCT. Um, judging by this, it's probably some sort of um, Mediterranean scheme, but we'll look into that in a minute. So, what have we got? The M31. Um, what do we say? All hatches can be built open or closed. Track assembly A is aided with the use of a jig. Detailed static display model, uh, link and length style track included, clear parts included, figures not included, four types of markings, PE parts included, this is not a toy. Usual stuff here. And the bottom here, ready assembled precision model kit uh, intended for collection, collectors age 14 and above. Uh, model may vary from image and box, mint and paint not included. Fair enough. Um, we've got a kit number here of number 2088. Now, I'm not sure when this came out. It came out a little while ago. It um, has been floating around. This is the first time I've seen it. So if we look on the side, Tacom, much the same as Meng, are in uh, cahoots, I would say, <laughs> in conjunction would be a better word, with um, ammo um, from MIG. And... They're giving you all his paint callouts. I would say any generic US World War II armor paint set will do for this. If you use um, armor by MIG, that's fine. If not, Tamiya, um, they do the various shades of olive drab um, and obviously black or uh, desert sand. Um, okay, we've got a copyright 2017, so this kit's been out for a few years. It was still relatively new. Um, so the first side of the box, you've got a depiction of the 2nd Armour Division, 366 Armour Regiment, Invader, um, SV-38 France, July 1944, so that's just after D-Day. Um, we've got 1st Armour Regiment Service Company, El Guitar, uh, Tunisia, April 1943. Now this kit, I don't know if... This is an addition that somebody's put in this kit because it is second hand or whether it's a special edition, I'm not sure. It does say it's got bonus parts of this Sierra Limite M31 Font uh, 501st MRCC. So this is obviously a French figure, so this might be a specific thing for the French market. I'm not sure, but this is the kit I got, so I will just look at it as it is. It may be that if you get this kit from a different com country or you know a different supply, it doesn't come with that. This is a second hand kit off eBay, so that's I'll give you that disclaimer now. You may the kit you may pick up may not have this figure in. If this figure's in, I haven't checked yet. So anyway, stop waffling, let's get back onto it. So on this side here we've got a sprue layout, and then we've got a couple of pictures. M3 Grant, M3 Lee. So the Lee would have been the American version, and the Grant was the British version. So this is what this is obviously based on, and this end here, again, we've just got the cover picture and kit number of 2088. So let's lift the box and see, it's quite a deep box, and it's very full. Right, figure. So that's what they're talking about. Instructions. So we're going to start with instructions, I'm going to leave the parts in the box and we'll take out as we go through it. So what have we got here? Got a beautiful decal sheet, a bit of brass cable, a little bit of PE, and a correction. 
okay, which is good, which means that they've obviously done a bit of research in the kit and they realise the problem and they'll let you know. So first of all, nice booklet form, nice glossy paper, well printed. There is, if you want to focus in on that, if I can get it to focus for you and you can pause it, you can read that to your heart's content. A little bit closer. There you go. So pause it and read that. Um, so TACOM, basic modeling instructions, parts layout, which is fine. And then we go into the construction itself. So hull, you've got some holes to drill. It's telling you one mil, 1.2 mil. Uh, that'll be the front um, gearbox cover that you're drilling holes into there. Lower hull, um, hull rear, you've got holes to drill in there too. This will be, looks like cable assembly or winch cable assemblies. Front gearbox cover, final drive covers. Part two, sorry, I'm shaking the camera there. Moving on to final drives, rear idle assembly, hatches, that's obviously making up the rear idlers, drive sprockets, road wheels, and then making the suspension system up. I'm not even going to try and tell you what it is because I can't remember. I'm not a big expert on US tanks, although when I was a lot younger, I did build Tamiya's M3. Grant, um, yeah, years ago, back in the early 90s, so yeah, show my age now. Right, wheels on, and then the link and length track gives you clear indication of which part goes where and how many you're needing, which is really good. Uh, then we're putting on side panels, front mudguard covers. Again, you've got clear instructions on the parts which holds the drill. Um, Moving on, we've got parts of the probably the exhaust baffles and the other whole side of plate, and then you've got the details there um, for the front gearbox cover. Right, pushing on, we then get on to front glasses plates, more side armor, detail work, more holes to drill. Um, not quite sure what that part is there, but this is the, the hole, the deck top. Again, more holes to drill um, and detailed plan views of how things go together. Yeah, looks quite comprehensive. Oh, I'll tell you exactly what that part is there. That will be the towing point for the front of the hull. You can see it on there. Storage boxes, again, small parts. Um, that looks to be this part here, which has got the bow gun, yeah, bow gun assembly there. Moving on, we've got spare road wheel, headlight guards, rear deck, engine, rear engine deck with rear mud guards, mufflers. That's your rear engine deck going together. Again, holes to be drilled, so you need to pay particular attention to these instructions. There's quite a lot of drilling to go on, so you want to make sure you get the holes in the right place and you don't put a hole where you don't need it. So obviously this is a base kit for the different uh, types of either the Lee or the Grant, so you need to pay attention to each part, but it is clearly marked and there is lines to each hole, so you shouldn't make a mistake as long as you take your time. Right, moving on, we've got more storage boxes. Pioneer tools, more Pioneer tools, and then we start moving on to the specialist equipment for the recovery vehicle. Now, it doesn't actually tell you what this piece is, but I'd imagine it's something to do with the recovery points or the crane derrick that is going to be on this vehicle. Um, rear engine hatches, air cleaners, a bit of armour plating to go around that with a little bit more Pioneer tools on. Right. Actually, we missed, I know I'm skipping back here, we missed on part 14. So if we look on part 14, and it says it's a magnified view. Um, okay, we're looking, looks to be on this side here, which you can't see. They're telling you you need to remove the end rivet head. So I'd imagine that is for one of these stowage boxes to go on. Um, probably this one's obviously going to foul that point, so you need to remove that for that storage box 
box to go on. So it's worth paying attention to that. Um, and what I'll be doing is just leaving this in here. I might even staple it to that point there so we know that that is relevant for that and we don't miss it. Right, moving on, we've got the turret assembly and then we've got what looks to be quite detailed work to make up the, the lifted derrick. Yeah, quite involved, I think, but not impossible. And it's very, very clearly made out. There are points in here that you're not supposed to glue, so it's obviously movable and posable. So it might mean that you can move it from the stowage, stowed position to the working position. And if that's the fact, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, kudos to Tacom for letting the modeler have that choice. Right, crane jib goes onto the turret front. So obviously they've removed the, the gun, probably it was a 37 millimeter, you know, armor piercing anti-tank gun. Um, and you know, they've put the, the lift and derrick on. So this is a vehicle, it's an obsolete tank that they've repurposed into an armored recovery vehicle, which let's face it, everyone still does it um, to this day, whether it's armored recovery vehicles, bridge layers, you know, whatever. When you have older bits of kit, it's cost effective to repurpose that into your engineering equipment. So your troops have obviously afforded some reasonable level of armor protection but they can then go and assist the, the fighting vehicles and recover them and get them back into the fight as quickly as possible. So we've got positioning the turret and jib assembly and either stowed or operational. And then you're onto your painting markings. So what have we got here? Um, the writing is really small, so for someone like me who's got really poor eyesight, it's, <laughs> well, not poor eyesight, but I'm needing reading glasses now. So you've got 1st Armoured Regiment, uh, Service Company, El Guitar, so that one's on the side of the box, Tunisia, April 1943. We've got 2nd Armoured Division, 3rd 66th Armoured Regiment, um, Tanks Georgia on my mind, and that's SV-38, Operation uh, Husky, that's July 1943. We've then got the one that's on the box side from July 1944. And then we have the 5th Army, 75th Tank, Battalion SV-39, uh, Mr. Lungo, Italy, January 1944. I do apologise if I'm getting this wrong, but I am struggling to see it. The print is so small. And then unknown unit, um, 30th issue depot, Iran, Algeria, May 1943. So you've got one, two, three, four, five marking options for this tank. So yeah, options are plenty. And then obviously you've got some of their other kits uh, advertising blurb. Great, fantastic, brilliant instructions, including the correction to keep you on the right track. Right, let's move them out of the way. We'll have a quick look at the decals because they're here. I'm not gonna take them out of the sheet. They look to have very minimal carrier film. I don't know if you can see that, they're all in register, they're clearly printed, very readable, and I think they're going to go down really rather nice. Copper cable, nice, soft, pliable, should conform well, fantastic. Photo etch, again, I'm not going to take it out, it's a very small photo etch fret, but it is the grill, light surrounds, and Fastening hooks for the air cleaners, it looks fine. It's very thin, very thin connection points. And on the detail side, it's got all the detail you need, easily identifiable numbers. Yeah, looks fine. Right, the figure, again, I'm gonna say, I don't know if this comes in every kit. It's in this kit, if it was a second hand kit, so I don't know where it's come from. I have to say the figure is beautifully molded. If I was to use it, it looks like it would take paint very well, paint detail very well, and will add an extra dimension to the model, but I don't know if it's in every kit. Right, let's start looking at the sprues. We may as well start with the hull. Right. Tack on, in their wisdom, have stuck with resealable bags. Did a review recently of Meng's Warrior. Thought they were in resealable bags, turned out to be staple bags. Nightmare. Not a big fan of staple bags, but I am a fan of resealable bags. So we've got the 
turret and the hull lower. Right, turret has got a fantastic cast texture on that. See if I get it in shot, it would help. And see if we can get uh, focus. I'm going to try and bring a light in and get a bit more light onto this so you can actually see the relief of the cast texture. That's better. Right, excuse my nails, I'm a biter. I did stop for quite a while and uh, yeah, fallen off the wagon, but we're back onto it and here we go. Beautiful cast texture on that turret, I have to say, very, very impressed. And if we look at the top, beautiful detail on the commander's coupler, even down to the cast in numbers there. Absolutely fantastic. Well done, TACOM. I'm very, very impressed. Again, I've never built a TACOM kit. This is my first TACOM kit I've actually looked at, so I'm yeah, really impressed to start with. Lower hull, these things were riveted to the nth degree, and TACOM have got every rivet in it. I'm not a rivet counter, so I don't know if it's 100% accurate. Don't really care. It looks like the vehicle. It is the vehicle. But these look beautiful. Very impressed. Very well molded, very sharp, crisp detail. This is going to take a wash and a dry brush beautifully. You're never going to see the underside of it unless you put it on a mirror, but it's there. You know it's there. Um, the details on the side here, you will see some of this because there is no side armour. So the options for giving us a bit of super detail treatment, you know, washes, dry brushes, pigment work, it's endless. Um, yeah, really quite impressed with that. And then you've got Tacom uh, 2017. 2088 so the kit numbers in there um, there is a few ejector pin marks in there but there's no interior detail so you're not going to see inside um, a little bit of strengthening in there as well so it's a good stout start to the project should keep it all nicely together right next screw that comes to hand is a double screw with running gear and suspension parts so let me get under this resealable lip i like these bags a lot you can look at them and get your spark screws back in and you know it's all going to be kept together. Right, TACOM, square runners, great idea. Again, all the ejector pins appear to be on the runners, clear of the parts, so we're not going to have to have very much worry about that at all. The parts are absolutely crisply moulded. I can't see very much signs of flash and I don't see any signs of burring where... The mold line is if you look on these round parts okay there's a very minimal burning but that's going to clear up with a sand and stick and a couple of swipes and it's going to be done again look at the detail look at the exhaust absolutely minute detail beautifully molded very fine um, attachment points so if you've got your nice single-sided cutters you're going to get these parts off without damaging them and you're going to have minimal cleanup which is going to aid the build See if we can get that to focus on that sprue. There we go. Look at that beautiful, beautiful molded parts. Right, next sprue we've got Lincoln Lake track. Um, we'll get it out. It's a double sprue, one each side. Is it? No, it's a single sprue. I stand corrected. So you've got both both sides on one sprue. There are one or two small ejector pin marks in these long runs and on the singles so you're going to have to do let me just check the focus yeah you're going to have to do a bit of cleanup on these a sharp scalpel probably will get most of them they all look to be reasonably raised so you're going to be able to scrape these away pretty easily the chances are once you detail up the tracks and weather them up with a bit of pigment and mud, you're not really going to see them. They are there, Ugh, might be a bit of a pain to clean up, but we're modelers and you know, if we didn't have anything to do, then it'd be boring and you'd just be an assembler. Again, on the outside of the sprue and the end, absolutely stunning detail. Really, really nice detail for this type of track. And I think with a bit of selective dry brushing and washing and pigment work, these tracks are going to pop. Right, I'm not going to bother taking this one out. This is part of the suspension units. Again, crisply, sharply moulded. No flash, no problems there. I'm assuming a lot of these parts are going to be common to the three different tanks, this one and the Lee and the Grant. Let's 
pop this armour sections out and hole sections out. Get the bag open. Again, rivet detail, beautiful raised rivets, really, really nice, really sharp, well moulded, no flash, no burring, fantastic. Pioneer tools, beautifully moulded, again, really nice small gates to them, so they're going to remove from the sprues without damaging, and they're going to paint up beautifully. Very impressed. Moving on, we've got what looks to be the sprue dedicated to the Derrick. And you've also got drive sprocket detail here. So let's show you that one. I'll make sure it's in focus so you can see it. There we go. Uh, we've got parts with beautiful cast or rolled, text, rolled armor texture to it. We've got hinges, this will be the bracing for the Derrick, no ejector pins inside it at all, no ejector pins on any of the parts that's going to be visible, absolutely fantastic for um, Tacom, hats off to you, slide moulded barrel, I don't know if we'll be using that, and yeah, fantastic slide molded ends for some of the Derek parts. Brilliant. Okay, we're getting through this. Just three more to go. So we've got all our storage items. Oops, sorry, shaky camera when I'm trying to focus. Let's just get it in on there. Brilliant. So we've got a couple of hitches here, uh, return rollers. I'm not sure what those parts are, but by goodness me, they're very narrow and thin. Look at those. Isn't that fantastically molded stuff? Um, one or two ejector pin marks. It's all on the inside. You're not going to see any of it. Road wheels, beautifully molded. Absolutely stunningly molded. Minimal burring, easy cleanup. Yeah, really impressed with that. Again, beautiful molding. Bolts, raised texture, hinges. It's going to be a fantastic build and slide molded gun for the bow gun with okay there's a, a bit of burr in there but that's not going to take much to clean up so you're not going to have to worry about getting turned aluminium barrel for that right nearly there so this will be the track assembly jig here we've got the idler wheel um, axles, more panel work, beautiful rivet detail, detail for the front gearbox cover here. I believe there is indentations on the back here for where you need to drill out, which is fine, gives you a guide. Um, again, if we're looking at the bow gunner posi the position, look at the cast texture or the rolled armor texture, it's fantastic. That's going to detail up beautifully with the wash and a bit of dry brushing. Yeah, really impressed with that. Yep. Pods and sods, Pioneer tools. Yeah, really, really good. Last but not least, we have got the final sprue with the hull detail. There we go. Again, Look at the detail popping. All the rivets are standing out. Um, nice and smooth. So it's obviously plate armour. It's not been rolled or cast. We've got some rope work here. Um, hatches. Mud guards. Spare track links. Gun mantlet for the bow gun. There we go. Look at the cast texture on. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Cast texture on the final drive covers. Look at that. Absolutely stunning even down to having the casting marks in it. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed with that. Um, possibly, I don't know, a bit of an ancillary tool or maybe a mortar bracket or something. I'm not sure about that. I'm no expert on this. And then front fenders. 
So there we go, that is all the parts. Uh, yeah, wow, really, really good. Let's get them back in the box. We'll get back onto me and um, we'll sum up what we've seen. Okay, so there we go. What a parts rundown for TACOM's M31 armored recovery vehicle. Thoughts on the vehicle uh, and the model? Wow, yeah, first TACOM kit I've ever looked at. Um, I've heard good things about TACOM. I've heard that the kits go together really well and they're really easy to build. Certainly the instructions would lead me to that impression that they should go together quite well. The parts look to be very, very well molded, very, very detailed in scale. Um, minimal cleanup with regards to connection points because they're quite fine if you've got a nice set of um, sprue cutters, whether a single edge or a double edge cutting doesn't really matter. Though that's fine, the connection points, they shouldn't need much cleanup. Ejector pins where it counts, they aren't any. Uh, certainly for the detail when it was looking at the um, the derrick the boom that goes on the turret, there was no ejector pins on the inside surfaces of it to, to worry about, which is fantastic. There were a few ejector pins on the tracks that probably were going to need some sort of clean up on them, but it didn't look to be too much of a taxing issue. So as I said, when I was looking at the parts, we're modelers, not assemblers. So whether you've got a sharp scraper for a scalpel for scraping it off or a very fine sand and sponge or with a file, it's going to be reasonably easy to clean up those marks, erase them and then move forward with the build. Um, a really interesting subject. Uh, there aren't just a huge number of armoured recovery vehicles from World War II. I know Italieri do a really old moulding and I think a little inaccurate moulding of the Sherman based armoured recovery vehicle. And forgive me, I cannot remember which modern company has retooled that. It may be TACOM um, or it could be Rifle Models. It's one of the Chinese companies that have um, retooled um, that kit to a modern tooling. But now we've got this tooling based on the, the Lee stroke Grant, the M3 variant, which is the earlier hull than the, the Sherman. Interesting vehicle. I think they were reasonably widely used throughout the Second World War and after by most armies. So, you know, the French, the British, the Americans, so most of the Allied forces will have had access to this. Now, as I said in the introduction to this video, I got this kit so I could put it on the Tamiya Dragon Wagon tank transporter because I thought it would be a really interesting subject to have an armoured tank transporter with an armoured recovery vehicle. And this particular model really stood out to me as being had an even more interest because I you know, hadn't seen it. So moving forward, um, once I've got the Revell Heinkel 111 build finished, I want to get into the FAMO and then I want to get into the Dragon Wagon. So that's kind of how I want my builds to progress for the end of this year and the beginning of next year. So yes, I will be building this. Um, and I will try and do it in a video series and then I'll be able to refer back to this review and give you my thoughts on how the construction actually went together to sort of tie it all together and I want to try and do that with some of the other reviews that I've done um, as well so obviously with the two tra tank transporters and the um, rifle model uh, Panzer IV that way there's a bit of continuity so I can then reflect on the review I'm doing now and actually say yes I was right in my thoughts it's going to go together well or actually no there is a few problems but you know that's that's what i'm aiming to do so yeah that's where we're at so to bring it all together i would recommend this kit it looks like it's going to be a fantastic build it's definitely an interesting subject and it gives the modeler loads of opportunity for um dioramas super detailing added extras to build a model that really will be an interesting piece for other models to look at and be a brilliant display piece for your model shelf. So there we go. Um, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, please feel free to put them down. I do take the time to read um, every comment that's put down and respond to it. It might just be a thanks for your comment or a more in-depth response, but I will you know, let you know that I've read your response and, and, and get back to you. I believe that if you take the time to speak to me I definitely must take the time to reply back to you it's polite and courteous so yeah if you want to do that feel free to do that if you've gotten to this far in the video thank you very much for watching to the end 
If you'd like to like and subscribe, the usual thing, please feel free to do it. If not, it's not a problem. I really enjoy making these videos and hope to give something back to the community. Um, so yeah, whatever, it's fine. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Ian. This is my kitchen table. Happy modeling, and we'll see you later.